name is Ipatia Pastelides, and I'm the director of the Lenox Writers Group of Washington, D.C. Speaker today is poet John Bocas. I met him over Facebook as he shared his poetry with our group. I love his poems, so I look forward to hearing him speak with us today. And we are honored to have uh, Dr. Bolivia Parada today moderating for us. Dr. Parada. Thank you, Patty, for the kind invitation. Uh, I'm honored to be a moderator in your event, and I welcome also Yanis Bocas, our poet today. I am Polivia Parara. I teach modern Greek studies at Classics at the University of Maryland, College Park. Today, I'm going to present uh, in a brief, like an English bio of Yanis Bocas, and then I will make a few remarks on his uh, poetic collections, Colors and Shadows. And then I will ask a few questions, like to warm up the discussion and uh, then open the floor for our poet to share with us uh, part of his life, and everything he wants to share with this wonderful group and audience. John Bocas was born in 1956 by Antonio and Ekaterini Boca in Etolico Mesolongi. After attending formal education and graduating from high school, he studied at the Aristotelian University of Thessaloniki for a science from 1974 to 1978. Due to a number of reasons, he came to the United States. I'm sure later you will have the opportunity to discuss uh, these reasons. He married the love of his wife, Eleni Caracosta, and 50 years later, they have three grown children and six grandchildren. Yanis Bocas likes to write poetry in his spare time, and he's contributed many Greek poems to the Facebook page of the Hellenic Writers Group. The contrasting title of his poetry collection, Shadow and Colors, this is the book and a nice picture of the poet, sums up its content. Yanis Bocas indulges in empirical poetry that embraces all aspects of life, placing them in an environment of social injustice. In a polemic style, he often denounces what casts a shadow on the human condition and simultaneously glorifies man's power to color the shadows shadows, excuse me, in defiance of these injustices. Through the challenges of opposing forces, the poet discusses all aspects of human life, love, physiology, social struggles, altruism, and philosophical quests. His poem, Temporary Obstacles, examines the opposite pairs of truth and lies love and fear as opposing forces in the human condition. But in his ongoing battle, the shepherd, the worthy man, Oaxios, will protect the human flock. Yanis Bocas is influenced by the folk poetic tradition, the demotic songs, and Christian parables, elements of which he combines in his poetry. For example, we see folk poetry's influence on, verse, on a verse inspired by the demotic song to Necru Adelfu, the dead brother. Vale to griso sinefo, yaselas to alohosu. Put the great cloud for a saddle on, excuse me, saddle on your horse. Furthermore, he references the iconography of the Christian parable of Christ at Shepherd. Κι όταν ο ρέξης πεινασμένων λύκων αφοπλίζεις, μες στο βαθύ κι ασέλινο νυχτιά σκοτάδι, τσοπάνεις άξιος, ταπεινός θεν απομείνεις για κάποιο απροστάτευτο κοπάδι. And when you feel like hungry wolves, you disarm, they disarm you, through the deep and moonless darkness of night, shepherd worthy, humble may you remain, for some unprotected flock. Temporary Obstacles poem presents in brief the man intamed by difficulties who draws, who draws 
strength from his Christian ethos protecting his fellow citizens. But his call for altruism is not limited to Christian love, but manifests itself as a revolution, revolutionary project. In the poem, Call for Life, Kalesma, the poet invites, Αν όλοι βρεθούμε μαζί σε επανάσταση μια χαραυγή, αυτή η μάχη για τη ζωή με κάθε θυσία θα κερδιθεί. If we all get together in a revolution and down, this fight for life will every sacrifice will be won. Yanis Bokas dedicates many poems to the theme of social justice. In his poem, poem Waiting, Anamoni, in an intertextual dialogue with the prophetic by Costis Palamas, he envisions that θα ξημερώσει κάποτε του δίκιου ημέρα που ο κάματο θα δρέψει τη ζωή στο στεφάνι. Σαν σιγοχαμηλώνει ρόδινη εσπέρα, χαμόγελα θα στράφτουν με όψη άλλη. Justice day will come one dawn, where the work will reap the crown of life. As the rosy evening fades, smiles will sparkle with a different face. The poet sympathizes with the poor and oppressed. In his poem, Orphanage, Orphania, he shows empathy with those who are hungry and cold. For a while, Sit on a miserable plane. They take the child together. He tends to fall asleep there at night with an empty stomach and an empty palm. The poet stands next to the suffering man, looking the truth in the face, a harsh reality. Αυτά και τα άλλα τη συνείδησή μου εμπέζουν από τις αλάνες της αλήθειας σαν περνά. Στο τσουχτερό το κρύο του χειμώνα τρέμουν δεκάχρονα, άστεγα, ορφανά παιδιά. These and other things fill my conscience from the comforts of truth it seems to pass. In the bitter cold of winter they trample ten year old homeless orphans. For this situation, in Pachi's poem, Balomata, Yanis Bokas will discuss the search for meaning in life as an existential necessity. He will declare his, himself disoriented in searching for solution and vocation, but willing to follow the humanitarian leader. Αν κάποιος γύρω μου βρεθεί με τόλμη και σαφήνεια για να περάσει την κλωστή σε μια βελόνα τρύπια και να μπαλώσει τάπλητα τα χιλιοτρυπημένα του ανθρώπου τα ανελαίητα, τα χάλια τα σχισμένα. Τότε θα πω αδίστακτα πως παίρνει ωστά και ουσία η κάθε μέρα εδώ στη γη και τη ζωή σε αυτή. But if someone around me is found, bold and clearly to pass the thread in needles hope, and to mend the unwashed, the thousands of men, the wretched, the torn, then I will ruthlessly say that it takes bones as substance every day here on earth and the value of life. But Yanis Bokas writes also about love. In his poem, Desire, Epithymia, he speaks in the first person about the unfulfilled love and unfulfilled desires, moving from I to we and then back to I. Κεράκια σύναζα του πάθους αναμένα, μα εγώ και εσύ ανάθεμα ποτέ δεν γίναμένα. Candles I gather of passion lit, but you and I, damn it, we never became one. In his poem, A Life in 11 Verses, which actually are 11 standards, Yanis Boca sets an autobiographical tone. Being an older man misses the future. Hard to want to go back to something that lies ahead, as he writes. 
He talks about his youth that was crippled in strangeness. He laments his fate that denied him hope. He deplores the lack of harmony on earth and feels poor. He is saddened that virtue wanders homeless in this world. He writes his poem looking at the truth. And although he looks at the injustices of society through poetry, he feels naked. The poet's refugee is nature, the ocean, and the deserted chapels where he is reborn and make him feel a child. And after this rebirth, the last station is death, which ends temporal life and releases the soul to eternal life. This may be why the older man of the first stanza misses the future, the moment when the soul lightly leaves the body behind. <coughs> Yanis Bocas shows intertextuality with the poetic tradition of Costas Varnalis in many of his poems. In Destinies, he writes about class struggle and social injustice and seeks the triptych of freedom, fatherland, and nation. He adds the universal vision of Angelos Sikelianos in his poem, in his rousing and visionary poems of this kind. Both the tradition of this engaged poet, Kostis Varnalis and Angelos Sikelianos, have an impact in Yanis Boka's poetic discourse. In closing, I will refer to an account of his poem, Haunted City, Stichiomeni Poli. And while most of his poems are in rhythmic verses, we see that he does not hesitate to write narrative poetry in free verse. Haunted City is a multiverse of narr a narrative poem in free verses divided into four main sections. In the first section and the entire poem, the poet uses his usual first or second person to address the fellow citizen the poor day laborer trapped in the misery of poverty, whom he considers and free under the yoke of necessity, anangi. To present the lack of freedom, he uses the voc vocabulary of confinement, handcuffs and prison. In the second section, the poet refers to Greek ancestral greatness, the modern day laborer tries to be inspired by this greatness and freedom, yet he realizes the adversity of his situation. In the third section, he takes our look at the streets of the big city to the natural and dangerous landscape of city avenues with traffic from which the safety and beauty of the natural landscape are entirely absent. In the fourth long and last section, in the light of the sunset and the colored illuminated signs of the city, people from childhood are trapped as the bars of the school fences indicate. <coughs> he will act, excuse me, he will talk about the small choice of love and hope from which man draws courage for freedom. In dialogue with the poem City by Konstantin Kavafi, the police, Yanis Bokas paraphrases as in this city where you grow old in an intertextual response to Kavafit, Saftiti Nidia Poli Thas Prisis, in the same city you will grow old, to suggest that we carry confinement within us. However, based on Kavafic version in the poem City, the Ipolis, this confinement is the result of individual responsibility. Whereas in Yanis Boka's poetry, it is imposed on us by external condition, conditions, having a Marxist approach on his poetic sociology that I would say is dominant in the poetry collection, Shadows and Colors. Thank you. And I hope I paid some justice to your work, John. <clears throat> now I would like to uh, invite uh, John to answer a few questions uh, that give us a greater picture 
of his work. And then uh, the floor will be yours also to present your work, your sources of inspiration and share with us uh, excerpts, recite excerpts, whatever pleases you to uh, present your work uh, to the audience. Could I start with a few questions if you would like to open the discussion? Thank you, John. So the first question is, when did you start writing poetry? Introduction. I did a great job. Um, poetry. Um, honestly, I've been a um, young kid loving poetry. From the uh, uh, elementary school years, through high school and so forth. And if I remember well, I broke grounds writing poetry sometime in the year 1967. Uh, 1967, and the theme of the poem was uh, nighttime. Nikhterini uh, Voski. Okay. Um, and that was, uh, well, I was about 11 years old, uh, something like that. Um, and then through high school, play, you know, uh, saying, uh, having poetry sessions in uh, celebration days, even playing theater in some of those occasions. Uh, I remember once I played the role of Katsadonis in one occasion. So I kind of let myself get into it slowly but surely, loving poetry and working on it. Uh, for years, obviously, uh, as amateur, uh, although 50 years or so of writing, you can call yourself amateur anymore. <laughs> Certainly not. Uh, my other question pertains to the, your source of inspiration. From my reading of your collection, like Colors and Shadows, as I said, I see that you're, dri you're driven by the theme of social injustice. And to me, you appear to be very sensible about that issue, which is something I admired in the poems. Your like love for the other, your concern about the oppressed and the poor. Would you like to comment on that a little bit? Well, <clears throat> Historically, it's been evident that the social injustice here in our motherland and elsewhere, it always exists. Conscience, it doesn't stay well. There is lots of work that needs to be done to straighten things up and be able to achieve happiness uh, for the everyday citizen. What really makes me sad, the way things unfolding and ongoing doesn't seem achievable in the upcoming century. Uh, last week, I attended two events, two lectures on space science and the achievements of mankind in science, and I was really impressed. But on the other hand, I said, we can move other like uh, comets, we can do so many things, we can colonize the space, and we cannot feed the poor. That's so, a good that, that was comment. my question, and in your poetry, you, you show that. That That's we cannot it. be happy surrounded by, by oppressed and poor people. Uh, my unhappiness starts and ends by seeing the simple things in life that they matter, not to be taken for granted, for from people that can actually really help and push forward 
the carousel of happiness in this world. Yeah. I was right then to see that in your poetry. It's a, it's a very like a central topic. And that takes me to the next question about the poets that have an impact in your poetry. And like from my like um, view, I saw a lot of uh, Costas Varnalis in your, uh, in your poems and his like uh, po poetic discourse of engaging people to care for the others and to change this uh, injustice, as well as Angelo Sicheliano's vision for a, for a unity, a universal unity and like um, a world of justice and betterment of the human condition. So in, in a few points, uh, certainly you, uh, have added an excerpt from like Varnali, so I felt it right. But would you like to expand more on or your uh, like uh, on the poetic traditions? Well, that yes, yes. Uh, over the years, uh, since I'm in love with poetry, I read and studied quite a few, you know, big personalities in the in the field besides Greek poets, you mentioned a few. I also read a lot Pablo Neruda, and I read a lot of Khalil Gibran, and even read quite a few uh, uh, works of Vladimir Pushkin um, and some others. I read quite a few of the uh, uh, poems from the anthology of American poetry. Um, now, in this particular case, Varnalis is uh, one of my heroes. I was right. <laughs> yes, it's it's very obvious. Because you 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 uh, quite engage for happened. The reason gets me a little bit upset. It's, yes. it's called Toxpinitiri to Lau for a reason. Yes. And um, I yeah. and he did a great work up to, up to his elderly years. Um, I definitely consider, though, Palamas the best Greek poet ever. And in my heart, I think Karyotakis was able to withstand the short, uh, the ups and downs of life and stay alive for a long time instead of passing away or at 33 or that age. He could have probably reached the athlon of poetry. Now saying all that, I do not, uh, one to uh, low play the works of Yanis Ritsos, of Odysseus Elites, and all his uh, excellent uh, work, and quite a few others, Sikelianos, and so forth. Big hero of the every time poets, Costas Christavis. Very nice. Uh, there are quite a few actually. Valauridis was was one very good one. Of course, Sikelia knows even Yanis Polemis from the old days. Uh, as far as new poets, uh, I haven't been able to study a lot, but I heard about Polyvuri and of course Libaditis, we all know. Um, and I admire quite a few of them. A Greek author, a Greek poet is fortunate to take advantage of this wonderful tradition. 
of anthropocentric humanistic poetry. So yes. it's, it's inevitable, like any author, any poet, not to be influenced by these great creators. So it was obvious that like you have studied that tradition and you mm -hmm. render that tradition with your own style, with your own sensitivities, your own personality. And definitely like this collection, uh, Chromata, Skieske Chromata is an engaged like poetry collection because you invite people like to uh, sympathize with the many, the oppressed. Um, so I would say it is part of that, that tradition. It becomes part of that tradition. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> uh, and I will say, hopefully, uh, if I be able to uh, publish soon uh, one of my books that's called The Three, the Three Chapters of Life, The Triptych of the Zoes. In that particular one, you will see even more of that effort to empathize with the lost and found in the of this world. Nice. So you have upcoming publishing plans, and thank you for sharing yes. them with us. Yes. Yeah. And like the last question before I pass the floor entirely to you to share with your audience, like your thoughts and experiences and work. What are words of advice on poetry would you give to this group of writers here today? Well, the advice that I will give them is that so many things in life that we fight for to make them better, to make people feel better and guide this world on the correct pathway of happiness. And all the holistic stuff around us, obviously, they are very near it, but they're not as important as, or, or, or as the em amplitism of the soul itself. Yeah. That's, that's a great piece of advice. The ethical battle for eufemonia, right? for yes life fulfilled with meaning. So now the floor is yours. This poem kind of, it will explain quite a few things. The title of that is Afta Uyireva. Pira tachnaria tu misemu, taxidevodas apakri sakri, την πατρική γη. Το καΐκι του καημού με γερόφερνε αγώγιστα από νησί σε νησί, διαπλέοντας πέλαγα. Βλέποντας μισοσπαρμένους κάμπους που περίμεναν δάκρυα βροχής να ξεδιψάσουν, γυμνά βουνά να υπομένουν το καλοκαιρινό λιοπύρι, και τις παγωνιές του χειμώνα. Ανταριασμένα δάση να μάχονται με αστραπές και καταιγίδε ένιωσα τη ζωή στριμωγμένη σε όστρακο χελώνας. Αγνάντεψα εξαγριωμένα κύματα και σύγνεφα που ξεσήκωνε ο άνεμος. Είδα από μινάρια ελπίδας στα καρισμένα σε βραχονησίδες και αγρίνια που τρύπωναν στις σπηλιές για να σωθούν. Γύρευα μια ήρεμη μέρα, ώστε να μπορέσω να απαριθμίσω τα χαμένα όνειρα στα συντρίμια που άφησε ο καιρός. Να αναθαρέψω αντικρίζοντας το χαμόγελο της αυγής. Να μείνω άναυδος θεατής του Δηλίνου, αποχαιρετώντας τον ήλιο που έγερνε σιωπηλά στη Δύση. 
ζητούσα ονειρεμένες νύχτες που δεν χαϊναγωγούν την αναζήτηση στο σκοτάδι. Ήθελα να απολαύσω την άνοιξη, να αναπαύσω την κούραση σε δροσερούς ίσχυους το μεσοκαλόκαιρο, να ξεδιψάσω το μόχθο στα κρυονέρια, να χαθώ περπατώντας σε φθινοπορεινή αντάρα, να αισθανθώ χειμωνιάτικες νοσταλγίες φορώντας στεγανές φορεσές, να αφομοιώσω το χάρι της θαλάσσιας άβρας ξαπλωμένος σε αμμουδερό ακρογιάλι. Να κρατήμαι όρθιος και αυλαβής όταν τα πάντα γύρω μου λιγούν και εξατμίζονται και εξανεμίζονται σόρι. Αντιμετωπίζοντας τα σκαμπανεβάσματα των καταστάσεων πράως. Να ελπίζω ακόμη και όταν τα παράθυρα ευκαιρίας κλείνουν και ασφαλισμένα παραθύρια απομακρύνουν ρανίδας φωτός. Να ανακουφίζομαι βλέποντας τον εαυτό μου χαμογελαστό τα χαράματα. Επιθυμίες πιστεύω και καημοί να κουρνιάζουν στα πλατήφυλλα της καρδιάς μου σαν αγριοπούλια, ελαφρύνοντας με τη δικιά τους λαλιά τον αδίστακτο πόδο. Όμορφες περασμένες στιγμές να στολίζουν θύμισες. Σχέδια και οράματα να δίνουν χρώματα στο σήμερα και σαφήνια σε μελλοντικούς στόχους. Το κάθε πρωινό να ανανεώνει το πάθος για ζωή, ανεξαρτήτως περιβάλλοντος και ηλικίας. Να συναντώ εσαρκωμένα προγνωστικά στην κάθε στροφή της επίγειας διαδρομής. Να μην χάνω την ψυχραιμία μου στις αναποδιές και αποτυχίες. Να ανακτώ ενέργεια και επιμονή ώστε να αποκαθιστώ ό,τι χειροπιαστώ εξαφανίζεται. Να έχω το όνειρο αδιάλακτο στην καρδιά και ένα ελπιδοφόρο μήνυμα στα χείλη. Να βρίσκω τη δύναμη να ανεχθώ και να αλλάξω τα κακό κείμενα. Να παραμένω απλοϊκός άνθρωπος που προτιμά να ζει δίχως προσωπίδες, χωρίς δεδομένα, δίχως σύνορα. Δίκαια, μετρημένα και σωστά, να φέρουμε προς εαυτόν και αλλήλους. Όλα υπομένονται και όλα εξαλείφονται σε αυτή τη ζήση. Για όλα υπάρχει κάποια ανακούφιση όταν η επιλογή δράσης είναι ιδανική. Ένα τραγούδι είναι η ζωή, με στοιχάκια χαράς και λύπης. Δίχως αυτό, η ματαιότητα των ημερών μας πάντα επεκτείνεται. Αν κάποτε στερέψει ο νους μου και οι σκέψεις μου πάψουν να νοιάζονται την ανθρώπινη μοίρα, το τραγούδι θα καταργήσει, θρήνο, θα καταντήσει θρήνος. Και αυτό ούτε το σκέπτομαι και ούτε το επιθυμώ. Όταν βιώνει την κάθε στιγμή την κάθε σου μέρα που αναντήρητα σου ανήκει στον ύψιστο βαθμό, οι ανάγκες και οι αναποδιές δεν καθοδηγούν την τύχη σου. Το είναι σου δεν υποτάσσεται ποτέ και δύσκολα συνθηκολογεί. Αυτό και η συνείδηση είναι που λιχνοφωτίζουν τον τίμιο δρόμο, αποφεύγοντας τα οδοφράγματα οδηγώντας σε στα πρόθυρα της ευτυχίας κάποτε. Γι' αυτό it hasn't been published yet. Να. The same poem in English. The title is What I Was Searching For. I followed traces of things that I missed traveling from end to end my motherland. 
the kayak of longing drifted around from island to island, sailing in the sea and complaining, watching the half-formed lowlands expecting tears of rain to calm their thirst. Bare mountains to endure the summer heat and the cold winter. Foggy forests to bat battle lightning and thunder. I felt life uh, was squeezed in a turtle's cell. I saw wild waves and clouds awakened by winds. I noticed remnants of hope stuck in rocky aisles and wildlife lurking in caverns to survive. I was looking for a quiet day to be able to enumerate the dreams lost in the rubble that time left behind. To encourage myself by seeing the smiley dawn to be speechless spectator of the sunset, waving goodbye to the sun that was disappearing silently in the West. I was calling for dreamy nights that do not spoil searching in darkness. I wanted to enjoy the spring, rest my fatigue in the sage, sage midsummer, to gench my thirst of hard work in cold spring water, to get lost walking in the art mud. Mod. Mod? Adara, I don't know. Okay. Uh, to he to 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 feel the nostalgia of winter wearing waterproof customs to assimilate the torch the touch of sea vibe laying back on a sandy shore. To keep myself upright and unharmed when everything around me bent in and vanished, facing the ups and downs of mixed situations. To hope, to hope even when the windows of opportunity are closing. And secured shutters are removing rainbows of light. Getting relieved by seeing myself smiling at daybreak. Desires, beliefs, and longings to curl up in the leaves of my heart, like wild birds getting lighter with the cute singing, the relentless pain. Good old times to, to adorn memories, plans and visions to be given colors to in today and clarity in future goals. Every single morning to renew the passion for life, regardless of the environment and of the age and of age. To meet my, my incarnate predictions at every turn of the life's road on earth. 
not losing my composure through the adversity and setbacks. To regain energy and persistence in order to recover everything tangible that disappeared. To have an applicable dream in my heart and a hopeful message on my lips. To find the strength to tolerate and change the bad circumstances. To remain a simple man who prefers to live without personalized masks, without grants, without borders. Fair, measure it, and right, treating myself and others. All is tolerated and all they are extinct in this life. For everything, there is some relief when the choice of action is ideal. Life is a song with rhymes of joy and sadness. Without this, the vanity of our days are always being extended. If ever my mind dries and my thoughts stop caring for the human being, fate, the song will become lament. And I neither think about it, not desire it. When you experience every moment, every day of yours that undoubtedly belongs to you, to the highest degree, the needs and setbacks are not guidance to your destiny and luck. What is yours never submits and, is, and, it, and it is difficult to condescend. This and consciousness are where they illuminate the honest path, dodging the roadblocks leading you to the threshold of happiness someday. That's... Uh, both versions of the poem you just heard. Any, any questions regarding that poem? Όχι, ήθελα να πω ότι είναι υπέροχα. Διάβασα όλο το βιβλίο του. Πώς γνώρισα το Γιάννη είναι ότι έχουμε τον τον ίδιο άνθρωπο που φτιάχνει τα αυτοκίνητα. Και μία μέρα μου, μου έστειλε ένα βιβλίο με την κόρη μου να το διαβάσω και το τηλεφώνησα και του λέω τι πέρα το, το ρούφιξα όλο. Όταν άρχισα να διαβάζω το τελείωσα, δεν σηκώθηκα από τη θέση μου. Και μετά του τηλεφώνησα και του λέω Τζον γιατί δεν έρχεσαι στο writer's club που έχουμε. Μου λέει δεν έχω καιρό, έχω δουλειέ πολλέ και δεν έχω καιρό να το κάνω αυτό και χάρηκα τώρα που σε βλέπω εδώ και που μοιράζεις μαζί μας τα ωραία ποιηματά σου. Και Είναι εγώ. πάρα πολύ συναισθηματικά. Με αγγίζουν πολύ. My pleasure. I love you all. Uh... Ο κύριος Γαλάνης, Mr. Steve Γαλάνης, has a question. Yes, Steve. How are you? Okay, well, well first of all, John, I just, uh, I don't really have a question about, about this poem. Um, I do just want to say that uh, I am a fan of your poetry. I don't know, I, I don't remember when I first came across it, but when I first came across your, your uh, poetry, I'm sure it was probably a fairly short one so that I could, I, could, I could figure out the meaning of it. And I just really appreciated the honesty of the writing and, um, and of course the man's point of view. And so I think, you know, um, a writer from, from, my, from my belief, from my conviction, basically has to write honestly, 
directly from the heart. And I, and I sensed that about you uh, early on. And, uh, and uh, that was I'm very glad. And you know, I do read your poems uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to your, uh, to your Horiani, you know? So uh, for example, to my Aunt Effie, uh, I will read uh, some of your poems uh, from time to time. And um, she, 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 really, she really likes it very much, very much. Thank you very That's much. It. I don't really have, I don't really have too much to say with regard to, um, uh, you know, I, 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 is Colors and Shadows the only, the only work you have published so far? That's the only that I did publish with my own expenses, the first book. It's not the first book, it's the, probably the fifth book in line that I wrote over the years. Uh, but that's the first one that uh, I published. In the meantime, I signed a contract with a publisher in Greece, and he's supposed to have one of my books called Stratocopos done by the time I was leaving mid-September, but it didn't happen. So it's still in the process and I still have to have him some pictures and stuff. So it's very close pretty much to do the page work and uh, be able to, to finalize. So that's pretty much in the way. Are you doing the illust are you providing all the illustrations for it, John? Yes, pretty much. Okay. Um, so the good thing is that I have probably after the one that you saw and the one that is coming, another 12 on the way, waiting for years to be published and still working, creating new stuff. So I'm gonna continue to present another, another one more poem and we see if we have time for anything more, for anything less. Before you do, John, um, somebody has a question. Yes. Uh, do, you, yes. do you write with an objective in mind or for cathartic experience? This is from Marby Pia Bocas. Yeah. Oh, Marby yeah. Pia Bocas. Yeah. I write, I don't have a particular goal in mind to achieve, but basically I write uh, based on the happenings around me and in, in the in the world itself, and the way I feel about things. Good. So, I, yeah, I'm not putting lies out there. Whatever I write, I feel it, and I believe in it. And I also had a question. Yes. Uh, before you read your poem, when you're writing your poetry. Uh, what comes first to your mind? Is it an image, a word, or a thought, or a feeling? Well, a lot of times it's a thought. It might be just a script of two, three phrases. But that script becomes the heart of the poem. And then I go... You know, maybe I'm driving down to 70 and I stop my truck on the side because I thought of something and I write on the back of a receipt that I have there or something like that. That's and awesome. one occasion of that, it was the, the big point that, that it's basically my Odyssey to Greece and it's called Oaoratos Epsceptis. And it's like 250 pages of one poem with uh, 17 or 18 different uh, passages. And that is still on the way. So let me ask you this. And then when you get to the end, how do you know when it's the end? How do you know when to stop? Well, there is a message basically or a capture through the poem, through the poem that I want to put out there. And once I feel that it's pretty much reached its destination, that's the end of it. Uh, although a lot of times, you know, before I really finalize something, I probably go over it anywhere from five to 10 times before I finalize it. That's great. I, I really enjoyed your poem and, uh, Thank you. and I'm glad and I appreciate that you were able to um, to have 
I guess your wife helped you. Uh, did you want to say? Yeah, uh, but your she, wife say hi she to forgot us. to put her makeup on today, and and, and thank it, you so much <laughs> for uh, helping to translate this. That's wonderful. It's, it was great. Okay. So, Poppy had a uh, question to ask. Yes, Poppy. Sí, Caritia. Y me digo me tosayatic nerve que y me estoy estoy crevati. Oh. A la hice la nasacuso. Ego eh, sin jaritiria, ya te hice espudeos pitis. Eh, que antropos. Que human being. Eh, Egis ek frasi, ta estima ta su, eh, ya oti, ya oti zume giro mas, que afto en e para polispudeo. Eh, Celo no diavaso ta biblia su, ala pos. Πώς θα τα βρούμε. Το βιβλίο Shades and Colors Shadows and Colors however you wanna go with it. Έχω, έχω αρκετά βιβλία εδώ πέρα. Τα έχω φέρει εδώ και τρία χρόνια τώρα. Δύο χρόνια αλλά λό, λόγω COVID και όλα αυτά. And within you know, Maryland, Virginia whatever facility I can take it to them or send it uh, by mail yeah. or whatever. From that yeah. Hopefully, by mid January, I should have the other one also on hand. I'm gonna, I'm, the other one is going to go on all the bookstores in Greece and it's going to be on the internet and so forth. I'm going to get quite a few copies here just to give around to some of my friends and so forth. Bravo. Αυτό το convention που είχατε το καλοκαίρι στο πώς το λένε στο καρπενίσι. Αυτοί όλοι, ο σύλλογος, όλοι αυτοί έπρεπε να σε τιμήσουν και να σου κάνουν μια μεγάλη, μια μεγάλη εκδήλωση και να πουλάνε τα βιβλία σου. Δεν μπορώ να το καταλάβω γιατί οι Έλληνες εδώ δεν προσπαθούν να προωθήσουν άνθρωπους των γραμμάτων και προπαντός εσένα που είσαι σπουδαίος ποιητή. Uh, I also can can uh, can probably arrange something to have books at St. George somehow that people Bravo. can can get, okay. uh, or even St. Constantine uh, Church Library. Oh, uh, but uh, the main uh, the, for now for this particular one that's the the best best way. Give me a call, and uh, since I'm not really working anymore. Uh, constructually uh, I can just drive and give it to, to, to people that want it and, and, and friends we have to get together all the poets uh, and do something uh, like this uh. um yeah that's something that um, you can work on I mean locally is that, that that's what you're talking about right yeah yeah that's something we can work on and probably try to, you know, be more visible and, and known and, and get people interested in buying books or whatever have you. So, we can, yeah. we can do something about it. If I may, Yanis, I have a question about the, the free uh, uh, verse. Uh, I noticed that like in your collection, uh, Shadows and Colors, most of the verbs have a rhyme. Up to 2011, I would say you write in a strict rhyme, but I see a transition after that uh, date. Yeah, lately, you and lately, it. Yeah, and from what you read, like after Pugireva, we see a very mature, free, uh, uh, so, yes, would you like to talk about us about the technique? Like, how do you feel like about writing in one way or the other? Uh, what I will say is, I think today's poetry, uh, you know, the almost topezo tragudi, it's much more easier for people to put their ideas and everything. Putting something like that, 
it's very difficult. That's why a lot of people don't write that way anymore. So to me, a poem without any rhyme here and there, it's not a poem. I'd rather write a story. A lot of the poetry that I see on the Facebook and stuff like that is like, hmm, what, what, can I consider that a kimono? <laughs> no poem, I, I, I have difficulty to describe it. That's an interesting yeah. point because like modern poetry is almost without rhymes. Like yes. most of the poems, like, yes. and I see you chose that, and in your this like autobiographical poem of Tapu Hireva, like you free your expression, and this brings more emotion, like more nuanced. This actually is I call it pesografima, not a poem. Personally, so. But it's the way of things unfolding today regarding poetry anyway. Thank you. Uh, Any other questions from the audience? Well, just, just a quick thought. Yes, Steve. And, and, you know, the thing is with free verse, you're right. I mean, a lot of the verse, a lot of the poetry that we come across these days is very hard to understand. I mean, so being able to understand the poet or the writer is imperative. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think uh, I think bringing it down, bringing it down to the reader's level is. It, you know, it takes a certain amount, it takes talent and it takes humility to be uh, uh, a strong poet. And I agree wholeheartedly with Poppy's, uh, uh, and Poppy is a very good uh, poet, by the way. So when she says you're an important writer, I, I would have to say you probably are, although I can't compare you to anybody because I don't read too much Greek, uh, Greek writing. I just know, I just know what's good. I have a good ear, but I don't necessarily good have. Vibe, I, don't, I, don't have the depth, I don't have the depth of knowledge. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Stevie. <laughs> Hello, P. How about your book? You have one here. Yeah. You do. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the one. Very nice. And I put the. Congratulations. Uh, I put the picture from. Uh, my father's uh, place in Epiros. My oh, okay. nephew, my nephew is a, a great uh, photographer. Hello, taxido. Yes, thank you. Θα σας διαβάσω ένα στα ελληνικά. Δεν θα προσπαθήσω να το να να το να το ερμηνεύσω στα αγγλικά, but έχω και ένα στα αγγλικά, το οποίο είναι από το, από το βιβλίο αυτό που είδατε, σκιές και χρώματα, και it's called Heart Attitude. So, I'll, I'll read that in English, and I'm, I'm going, then I'm going to read the παράξενο όνειρο in... Uh, Paradoxal Onero in, 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 in Greek. The tear dried, dried at my eyesight, and the breath in my lungs feels lightweight. Seas of travel opening up in my dreams, but I remain, remain anchored in shallow waters. I will wake up with hopes that daily off they go, leaving behind a faded mask of solitude. Memories netting me around, trying to try tying up the ropes in the anchored boat of joy. Like migratory birds years go by. Raging up, ranging up 
the face of the youth. My lives are in desperate need and the stick staring at the lonely horizon blank. Oh, my sad girl that you wrinkled, staying unmarried old lady in the passage of time. You, my sweetheart alone, you got me twisted simply to cover the sins of others. That's Cardias Kamomata Stylinica. In a story of Leo, where I'm on hand. Do the, the paradox then. I read it in, in, in yes. very, very fast. Se gelasti tria da filia, moscovolusa nianthi, mas tu puliu talafiasma, cunyodusan clavi. Sto proeno adiasma, stales drasias se hilizan, pestodas sto hortari. Sorry. Stales drasias se hilizan, και σαν διαμάντια έλαμπαν, πέφτοντας στο χορτάρι. Στο βλέμμα της Ανατολής τρεμούλιαζαν οι αχτίδες και μοναχή μουρμούριζε παράμερα μια βρύση. Και εκεί σε είδα χάραμα, όμως εσύ δεν είδες. Στα ποψινό όνειρό μου. Με μια τρισεύγενη ομορφιά σε στόλιζε η σιγαλιά. Τα μάτια σου αναγάλιαζαν με φεγγαρίσια χάρη. Σα λίμνης γάργαρο νερό στη νύχτα που λαμποκοπά. Απ' τα μαλλιά σου διάβαινε το βάλσαμο να πάρει ανάλαφρο και αδέσποτο της μοναξιάς του αγέρι. Μάλλον εσύ δεν ένιωσες τον πόθο τον δικό μου αφού δεν με προσέγγισες για να σε κάνω τέρι. Στα πατηλό όνειρό μου. Κατόπευτε από το στήθο σου σαν φόρεμα υπάρχει. Λεπτομερός δεν σε έβλεπαν στο σύθαβο τα μάτια. Φαινόσουν σαν καθρέφτισμα που εμπόδιζε η άχνα. Μα του κορμίου σου ίσκιωμα. Σαν άγγελος περπάτα. Θα ρω πως ξεγελάστηκες στο λουλουδιόν τα μοίρα και έγινες ομορφότερη στο λάγνο λογισμό μου. Φαίνεται μέσα στην πλάνη μου κούφια χαρά πως πήρα με σένα συντροφό μου. Πλησίασες γυρεύοντας ανθούς για να σου στέρξω. Μα σκύβοντας να μυριστείς οι πεταλούδες έφευγαν και έτσι με κλόνους της μυρτιάς ντύθηκα να σε μπλέξω. Βουδί με κοίταζε γλαρά και στη ματιά σου διάβαζα ως πεθυμιά σου ήτανε τους κλόνους μου να κόψεις. Και όταν μου χαμογέλασες, κανθόφυλά μου σου δώσε. Τάρπαξες και τα ανάμιξες με κυπαρισοκλόνια. Τα λόκο το όνειρό μου. Ξημέρωσε και το όνειρο, απέγινε καημό μου. Τη όψη σου ευασίλευσε στις δύσει τα πλοκάμια. Το θαμποβόλημα εξηγεί τη μοίρα αυτού του κόσμου, καθώς έγινε αγνώριστος χωρίς τα μυρτοκλάμια. Όμως συχνά στον έρωτα, παιχνίδια η ζήση παίζει. Κι αν με κυπαρισόκλαρα μπερδέψεις τους ανθούς της, σημαίνει ότι σ' αγαπά ψυχή κάποιου που έχει πεθάνει. Αυτό είπα στο νερό μου. Λέω. Αυτά. Σας ευχαριστώ. We thank you, Γιάννης, for this wonderful poetic journey. And now I will turn the floor to Patty for her conclusive remarks. 
Thank you, all of you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Patty and uh, Sylvia. I still call you Sylvia. Olivia. 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 <laughs> Olivia. John, thank okay. you so much. I enjoy uh, looking at the Facebook page, just uh, hoping that you will post your poems. Um, yeah. Become like a daily, you know, you know, you sip your coffee and you read them. And, I always do in the morning normally. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's like uh, something to come to you every day. So I really appreciate that and that uh, you found us and we found you. Both of you ladies for the effort and a uh, beautiful show today. Thank you very much. Welcome, Patty. And I would like to thank you for bringing intellect and emotion together in the Washington area. And this is wonderful for uh, everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you, Livia. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right. So letting you know that. Okay, we can send them more. Yeah. We're passing around. Everybody can have one. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the uh, Sunday. The rest of the day. Thank you.